So I attempted to do something a little different and tried to do a live demonstration video on how to use a sawn off. It didn't turn out exactly as I was hoping. There was a lot of background noise from the aquarium, but here you go. I didn't want to lose the information, so just bear with me and hopefully it came out all right. Hey man, so today I'm doing something a little different. I want to show you what I'm using to uh, power my lights through my cell phone. So first off, we're gonna bring back an oldie but a goodie. My little bridge lux light, and this will be our, um, our guinea pig for it. Let's put it aside for right now, and then I will show you what we have. So what we're looking at, something like this, they're called sauna. So you could buy about four of these on Amazon for, I think it's like six of them for $40. They're about like, so if you bought them individually, they're like 10 bucks to use, maybe like eight bucks. Uh, they're not super expensive. They're very easy to install. Now, a lot of people like to use Arduinos and stuff like that. I'm not good with that. So if you aren't either, this is something right off the shelf that is very easy. It already has an app that's online, although it's a China kind of thing. And the grammar is terrible in the instructions, but it works really well. So I thought I would help figure out how to use it since I had trouble figuring out the Chinese instructions. With that said, there are multiple versions of it. This is a single, and it looks like this. Pull this bad boy out. It has two covers. If I can get the other one out, that cover up these guys right here, make it look nice and snug. It's got this black dot that comes up. If I pull this thing out here, you'll see that there is a come on, PCB. You got all your normal stuff, you got your ins, your outs, this black button for connection, you got your whatever else this is. But for the most part, nobody needs to know about any of that. All they need to know is that there is a button, you get some screws to seal these on. We'll put all this aside for right now. Now, this is a single sawn off. There are also duos, or duels, that have two channels that'll power through one. There are also another set that I believe are called AH. T10 and HT16, and those ones will do temperature and humidity regulation and allow you to control outlets that will control your um, temperature and humidity through, through the, whatever outlet you want to do it to. So I actually have something for that too, and I'll show it to you right now. All right, so I have something like this. I was working on it for a little bit. It didn't turn out that great. I'll probably uh, end up gutting it. But essentially it's just a couple of these guys that are plugs that would go in and then you put the sawn off inside the dual for the temperature and humidity and I can control my humidifier and my um, intake or outtake fan to control the temperature and humidity in my room. Uh, I ended up just adding it to a light that I had and then controlling the actual humidity through a plug at the back end of my light, which I really liked and I thought was a good idea. So I don't have the duos or the temperature humidity, but what I do have is the four channel. And so we have a four channel pro and this is what it looks like. It's a little bit bigger, but it allows you for four different channels to power through. There's a few things on here. If you take off the stuff, you have to flip some switches. I don't remember what I switched because it was a while ago to get it to work. But essentially when you buy this stock, if you turn on the first channel and then turn on the second channel, it will turn off the first channel. And so that's something I don't really want to deal with. And there's a way to bypass that, but I don't remember what it was. So I'm not going to go through it only because I don't want to give you the wrong information. There was something on YouTube that I found that gave me the right information. And I recommend finding that if you want to use something like this. But with that said, I'll show you how to wire this one later. For these sawn offs, you'll need two kind of tools for it. You'll need a micro screwdrivers, two of them, one a Phillips and one a flathead. The flathead will be used to control these. Now you want to find out what your input is, what your output is, and this little black dot will be the one to control what you need. So further, without further ado, let's do this. Now I already have the Wago clip on the ground because that needs to go around it. It doesn't connect into these pieces, but we will put the neutral, which is, we'll put the live, my apologies, which is black. I have a lot live in my hand, so I will put that in first, and I will connect that up, screw down the screw, check to make sure it makes connection, it does. Then I will put the white, which is your neutral line in, make sure it's in there, screw it in, 
give it a tug and we're good to go. Then I'll go to this side and I know that the brown is your live and I will put the brown in as far as it goes. Screwdriver it down, give it a tug. Ooh, see, right there, it fell out. So I need to unscrewdrive it in. Release that screw that's there. Put this, come on. I don't want to go back in. Try to release the tension a little bit. And I am losing the battle. Alright, we're in. Hopefully. No. Kick down. Push it together. And there we go. So it's nice and tight. And then I will be putting the blue, which I know is the neutral, inside the neutral slot. And I will do the same thing at 10 minutes. Uh, it does help not to have the greens already wagoed, but I've done this video several times to get a good cut. And this is as far as I've gotten. First things first, let us plug this in and you'll start seeing a green light blink. Once that green light blinks, you know that this has power to it and you're good to go. And you notice that this is not on so that this thing is now your switch that controls whether the system is on or off. So let me get that a little bit closer and let me scoot over to my phone on this one. So we're gonna go onto the app. You'll sign into your app and you'll have your different stuff. So you can see that I have four channels, two channels, and one channel. We're gonna add a new channel. So what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna wait for it to light up. So you're gonna hold this black button down. It's gonna blink. rapidly and then you're going to go back over here and while it's quick pairing you're going to hit next your internet and password you want to make sure that your mobile data is off because it'll fuck with the download ability Give it a minute, it says three minutes. It takes less than that. It definitely does not take three minutes, but hopefully the pairing went through because it registered. So we'll change the name to Tester. It'll probably take a few minutes to come through. And once it's connected to your Wi-Fi you now have capability of adapting to a turn on. Uh, we can go through the app and I can show you some of the cool features that it has, but we gotta give it a few minutes to connect to the Wi-Fi. You can control it on or off, and I can't show you that here now, which sucks, but that is the premise of how it turns on. The other thing is, it has a manual on and off. If I hold that button again, It'll allow me to just kick it on and then I can dim it up or dim it down. And that'll also work. All right, let me unplug this since I know it's not gonna work because it hasn't worked the last six times I've recorded this video and I'm not sure why and that makes me angry, but I can't do anything about it because what am I supposed to do? Fix their Wi-Fi? All right. So this is the Sonos Pro, and this is how you wire it up. So what you're gonna have is, you're gonna have a terminal block, you do Wagos, you do a terminal, actual terminal block, but you're gonna need two of them. And you're gonna have one that feeds into your neutral line, which is also why you need these micro screwdrivers, because they make it very easy just to open up the channel, push it right in. But so that'll go in there, and then what you'll see is, you'll have, I will put, my black line coming from the outlet, this guy. So I have all of this is connected directly from the outlet or the plug or the wire, whatever is coming in to give you power, it's directly connected. So you want this whole thing to be wired through power. So this is controlled on its own and then each individual line goes in like such. And so what that does is gives lines to every power and then you have these color ones that were in there originally that will go to the actual drivers. And that'll be your power on and then, or your live. And the neutral will just go from 
neutral in, go into here, and then the rest of the neutrals will go directly to your driver. So this is just used to control your live lines if you want them normally on or normally close, normally open or normally close, and that's pretty much it. It's relatively simple, and that's the basic premise of how sonops work. It's very simple and very easy to use, and you can use them in tons of different situations, and they're very cheap, and they're an easy way. I know that other people will use, I think they're called storm controllers, and those are cool because they allow you to dim and control different time frames of the intensity of light. These don't, these are very basic, but they're also very cheap. They will allow you to remove the uh, extra, you know, your plug timers, the things that you just hit the pins in and stuff like that and allows you to remove that kind of stuff, which I like. I don't like those things. I like to make sure that I can see what's going on on my phone and that makes it very, very convenient. With that said, there's not a lot of adaptation to them. You just have an app on your phone that turns them on and off at different segments, but you can do multiple lines and all that kind of stuff through it, which is cool. You can also do things like temperature and humidity, which is nice, but you don't have dimming. And dimming is kind of a big thing. So if your room's really hot and you're away for the weekend and you can't dim, that sucks. Now, there are products out there that do that for a relatively good price. I like them. There's a lot of variation and there's a lot of things you can do with them and they're very, very cheap and very, very basic. And as you can see, they're cheap because apparently they don't connect to the internet very well. I have no problems and I have had no problems connecting them at home to any of my Wi-Fi. I think it's just something that has to do with my personal office here. But I will be looking into it eventually and fix it. But if I can, I want to make sure I get this video out. So thank you for joining me today, and I hope to see you guys again soon. But until then, remember, grow it funky and keep it fresh. Catch you guys next time.